Chapter 11.1 Dilations, Dilataciones. A dilation is a transformation where you change the size of a polygon to make it bigger or smaller. But it's going to be this it's going to still be the same shape just bigger or smaller. The two shapes are going to be similar. Uh, the angle measures are going to stay the same. You're just making the, the polygon bigger or smaller. Una dilatación es una transformación donde están cambiando el tamaño de un, de un polígono para hacerlo más grande o más chiquito. Las medidas de los ángulos se mantienen igual y el, la figura, el, el polígono nuevo tiene la misma figura que el original, simplemente más grande o más chiquito. Now, to make the, um, the polygon bigger or smaller, you're going to multiply all the sides by a scale factor. All right, the scale factor is the multiplier used on each dimension to change one figure into a similar figure. All right, so I got two examples here. On the left-hand side, we have this uh, rectangle, okay? So if you look at the the length of the sides, all right, it's pretty obvious that all the sides are being multiplied by five to get the, the new shape, all right? So this is the pre-image and this is the image. Okay, now on your homework, when they ask you for the scale factor, the way you write the scale factor is always as a fraction. You put, um, like you pick two corresponding sides. For example, let's pick the top side, which goes from 2 to 10. Okay, You're, you always put the measurement of the new side on the top and the original one on the bottom. All right, so it went from the smaller rectangle to the bigger rectangle. So I'm going to put the, the length of the, the new side on the top, 10, and on the bottom, the length of the original side, which was 2. So the scale factor is 10 over 2, or 10 to 2. And when you simplify that, the scale factor is 5. For this example, it's pretty easy. So did I need to do all that? No, not necessarily. But for others, you're going to, know, you're going to know, have to know which number to put on the top and which number to put on the bottom. So again, for a scale factor, it's always the new measurement on the top and the original measurement on the bottom. That's important. New on the top, original on the bottom. Um, one thing you could use to remember that is that it's an alphabetical order. So the letter N comes before the letter O. So, so the N goes on the top and the O goes on the bottom. New on the top, original on the bottom. All right. Um, over here, at, when you look at these triangles, Okay, now here, the original one is the big triangle, the new one is the little one, so it's getting smaller, all right? Our, our image is going to be smaller than our pre-image, okay? So again, a quick look at the sides, all right? If you know your timetables, you could easily tell that all the numbers are being divided by three, not multiplied, but divided by three to get the new measurements over here, okay? So if you look down here at the formula that I wrote, to get the scale factor, on the top you put the length of the new side, and on the bottom you put the length of the corresponding original side. So for example, if I'm comparing the side with the 9 to the side with the 3, all right, because those two sides are corresponding, I would put the 3 on the top and the 9 on the bottom. So my scale factor is 3 to 9, and when you simplify that scale factor, it's going to be 1 over 3. I simplify that by dividing the top and the bottom by 3, which is something you should realize if you know your timetables. If you don't see that, it's because you don't know your timetables. All right? Um, and uh, something to keep in mind is this. Notice that when the, when the shape goes from a, a, a small shape to a bigger shape, when it gets bigger, the scale factor has to be a number bigger than 1. All right? So to make the shape bigger, I got to multiply by a number bigger than 1. And on this one, where I made the, uh, the pre-image smaller, all right, from the original to the new one, it got smaller. So whenever it gets smaller, you got to multiply by a number that's between 0 and 1. In other words, a fraction or a decimal. But it's got to be less than 1. So if it's getting smaller, you multiply by a number that's less than 1. Less than 1, but greater than 0. All right? It's never going to be negative. The scale factor is neg never negative. All right? So again, if it gets bigger, you got to multiply by a scale factor bigger than 1. If it gets smaller, you got to multiply by a scale factor between 0 and 1. It's usually a fraction or a decimal. 
Let me say that in Spanish real quick. La factor de escala es el, el multiplicador utilizado en cada dimensión para transformar una figura en una figura semejante. Así que, por ejemplo, aquí tengo dos rectángulos. Okay. Es obvio que están multiplicando todos los números, todos los lados de este rectángulo por 5 para coger los lados correspondientes en este rectángulo. Pero si el factor de escala se tiene que escribir de una manera específica. Siempre es, para este ejemplo es bastante fácil, pero hay algunos donde tienen que saber la manera correctamente de escribir esto, especialmente para la tarea. Okay, así que siempre se escribe, eh, bueno, primero que nada, siempre se compara dos lados correspondientes. Okay? Así que, por ejemplo, este lado de arriba con este lado de arriba. No lo puedo comparar con el lado que está aquí a, en este lado porque no son cor lados correspondientes. Siempre se pone la medida del lado en la figura nueva arriba y la original abajo. Se pueden recordar de eso porque está en orden alf alfabético. La N viene antes del O. Así que eh, la N va arriba y el O abajo. Si estoy com comparando estos dos lados, escribo la D arriba y el 2 abajo. Y siempre tengo que simplificar. Así que aquí la, el factor de escala sería 10 a 2. O cuando lo simplifico, 5. Siempre se simplifica. Así que sería 5. Sería la, la respuesta correcta. Ok, y um, en este ejemplo aquí tengo un triángulo que estamos empezando con este triángulo y se está poniendo más chiquito. Así que otra vez, para encontrar la factor de escala, tengo que comparar dos lados correspondientes. Así que si comparo este lado con este lado, siempre se pone la medida del lado nuevo, de, de la figura nueva arriba y el, de, el original abajo. Así que en este caso sería 3 sobre 9 y cuando lo simplifico, 1 sobre 3 o 1 a 3. Eso sería la, el factor de escala. All right, so look at some examples. These are examples that are, are going to be on your homework, all right? Um, so it says square A is a dilation of square B. What is the scale factor? Okay, first of all, let's look at this because it's easy to confuse what they just said there. Which is the pre-image and which is the image? That's the question. Which is the pre-image and which is the image? It says that square A is a dilation of square B. So square B is our pre-image. That's important because if you, it's the way it's written, if you, I mean, you guys are new to this, so it's very easy to get confused and think that, that your starting point is square A when it's not. Your starting point is actually square B. You're making square B bigger. Because it says square A is a dilation of square B. So square A is the image and square B is the pre-image. So we're starting from square B, making it bigger to get square A. If we're making square B bigger, that means that the scale, ha scale factor has to be a number bigger than one. So if you look at the answer choices, it's got to be of the bottom. The correct answer has to be one of the three on the bottom. Because the first two answer choices are less than one. Okay, so uh, remember that our formula for scale factor is you put the new on the top and the original on the bottom. All right, so if we're starting with square B, okay, the original is 28 and the new is 35. So the 35 goes on the top, the 28 goes on the bottom, and you always got to simplify in this case, you could divide the top and the bottom by 7 to make it smaller. So your scale factor is going to be 5 over 4. So letter C. Okay. En este pro problema lo, lo tienen que leer y entender bien porque es muy fácil confundir. De la manera que lo escribieron, dice que cuadrado A es una dilatación de cuadrado B. Así que el, estamos empezando con cuadrado B y lo vamos a hacer más grande para coger cuadrado A. Porque dice que cuadrado A es una dilatación de cuadrado B. Okay? Así que 
Eh, recuerden que el factor de escala se escribe eh, los lados que están correspondiendo, eh, los lados que están comparando, ¿ok? El nuevo arriba y el original abajo. En este caso, un cuadrado tiene todos los lados, to todos los lados de un cuadrado miden igual. Así que no importa que estamos comparando este lado con el lado de arriba porque todos miden igual. Así que el nuevo se pone arriba que es 35 y el original abajo que es 28. Y siempre tengo que simplificar la fracción así que sería 5 sobre 4 eh, el factor de escala. Ok, here they ask the question, is the scale factor of the dilation of triangle ABC equal to one half? Ok, um, That has to be wrong. Why does that have to be wrong? Because look at triangle ABC. Triangle ABC is this one right here. Okay. And this one is, this is our pre-image. ABC is our pre-image and, and A prime, B prime, C prime is our image, our new one. Okay. I know because of the apostrophes, right, that this is the new one. So you're going from the small one to the bigger one. That means that the scale factor has to be a number greater than one. It cannot be less than one. It's got to be greater than one. Okay. Um, now look, whenever the sides or whenever any line segment is slanted, the only way to get the length is by using a distance formula, which is a little bit of a headache. So let's avoid that by just looking at this side right here, which is horizontal. All right. And that one, we could just get the measurement by just counting the, uh, the blocks or the lines. So it's one, two, three. And if we compare it to its corresponding side over here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So obviously the scale factor is two. The scale factor is two. All right. So the, the scale factor is two. Así que en este problema están preguntando que si la factor de escala en esta dilatación de triángulo ABC es igual a 1 sobre 2. No, no puede ser igual a 1 sobre 2. Porque eh, estamos empezando con el triángulo ABC, que es este chiquito, que es el triángulo chiquito. Para cambiarlo al triángulo más grande, A', primo, B', primo, C'. Primo. Si se está haciendo más grande, el factor de escala tiene que ser más grande que 1. No puede ser menos que 1. ¿Ok? Así que si comparamos este lado con el lado correspondiente que sería este, pueden comparar que esto es, este lado mide 3 y este lado mide 6. ¿Ok? Recuerden que para el factor de escala, el scale factor, siempre se pone el nuevo arriba y abajo el original, Aquí, así que 6 sobre 3, que cuando se simplifica sería 2, el factor de escala sería 2. Ok, now we're going to look at the second type of problem that you're going to have on your homework. It's very similar to what we just did, but there's a couple new things I got to go over. Um, okay, so here it says determining the center and scale of a dilation. When you have a figure and its image after dilation, you can find the center of, of dilation. Let me underline that because that's important. All right, the center of dilation by drawing lines that connect corresponding vertices. So if you draw lines that connect corresponding vertices, all right, like this one to this one, a prime to A and C prime to C. If you draw lines connecting them where they all meet, that's called the center of dilation. Okay, now you're not going to have to draw that. And to be completely honest, this doesn't really come up that much. But, but there are questions on the homework on this and they're easy. So I'm including it. Um, okay, so that's the center of dilation. It's if you connect, if you draw lines connecting the corresponding points on the two figures where the, the where those lines meet, that's called the center of dilation. Okay, so in these questions, they're going to ask you to find the scale factor, just like what we just did. Find the scale factor of the dilation, but the way you write it is slightly different, okay? 
So um, first of all, they're going to give you, like, all right, in this problem, on the homework, they're going to tell you, hey, the distance from, from, for example, from O to A, if you look at the picture, from O to A, they're saying is 25 millimeters, and from O to A prime is 50 milli millimeters, all right? They're going to give you that information on the homework, okay? So remember that for the scale factor, the formula that I told you to use is the new over the original. Scale factor equals new over the original. All right, so in this, this example, the new is always the one with the apostrophe, the prime. All right, so the new is O to A prime, which is 50 millimeters. I would put 50 on the top if I'm comparing these two sides. All right, and the original would be the, o, the OA without the apostrophe. All right, which in this case is 25 millimeters. All right, now, so 50 over 25, when I simplify that by dividing the top and the bottom by 25, I would get 2 over 1. All right, so the scale factor is 2 over 1, or another way to read that is 2 to 1. All right, so look how they wrote it here, because on the homework, they're going to ask you to write it this way as well. So when they ask you to write it this way, horizontally, where you're writing the scale factor is what to what. Like what number goes here compared to what number goes here. All right, you write it in this order. The 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 one on the, you read it like this: two to one, two to one. All right. So the two goes first, and the one goes second. The new one goes first, and the original one goes second. That's another way to say it. All right. All right. Please keep that in mind because if you do everything right, but you write one to two, they're gonna mark it wrong. The scale factor is two to one. Just imagine that this uh, the fraction sign. You could read it as as the word two. All right, so two to one. If I if I compare these sides, I'm going to get the same thing: two to one, two to one. All right. Well, let me say that in Spanish, and then we'll look at like two more examples that are similar to this one. All right. Um, este es el segundo tipo de problema que va a haber en la tarea. Es básicamente la misma cosa. Hay una cosa nueva que tengo que explicar: el centro de dilatación. Ok, el centro de dilatación, que es este punto aquí, es si uno dibuja una línea conectando los puntos correspondientes. Por ejemplo, una línea conectando B' a B, A' a A y C' a C. Donde esas líneas um, intersectan, ese es el centro de dilatación. No va a tener que dibujar el centro de dilatación ni nada de eso, y esto no sale mucho. Pero eh, está en la tarea, así que lo estoy incluyendo en esta lección. Ahora, van a tener que en estos problemas también determinar el factor de escala. ¿Ok? Y um, es básicamente la, la misma cosa. Um, a, le van a dar las medidas de los segmentos. Por ejemplo, aquí te están dando la medida de OA, de, de, de O, el centro de dilatación, hasta A. La medida es 25 Uh, millimeters y de O a A primo 50 así que recuerden que siempre se pone para encontrar el factor de escala la medida de, del nuevo sobre la medida del original el nuevo siempre es el que tiene el apostrophe ok así que O A primo es el nuevo así que se escribe el 50 arriba y el 25 abajo y cuando simplifico esa fracción dividiendo arriba y abajo por 25, el factor de escala sería 2 sobre 1. Ahora, hay algunos problemas donde le piden que le escriben la respuesta de esta manera. Eh, la factor de escala es cuál número a cuál número. Cuando se tiene que escribir la respuesta de esa manera, imaginen que la línea de fracción es la palabra to en inglés. Así que se lee eh, 2 a 1. Eso es lo que quiere decir 2 a 1. La factor de escala es 2 a 1. Primero se escribe el número de lado nuevo y el último que se escribe es el lado original. Okay? Así que aquí la factor de escala es 2 a 1. Vamos a mirar algunos más ejemplos como este. All right, so... Um, Here are the measurements of all the sides, all right? Pretend that they're giving you this information. Here, I already have the answer written out, but I just want to go over how to get to that answer one more time, all right? Because on the homework, they're going to give you the measurements of all the segments, 
and you just got to find the scale factor. All right, so let's take, I mean, you can compare, all you got to do is compare two corresponding sides. They're all going to give you the same answer. So if I compare these two sides, all right, OA, O is the center of dilation. So here's O. That's the center of dilation. So the distance from O to A, that's all of this, is 60. Okay, notice that the A does not have an apostrophe. So, so that's the pre-image. And the image is this one, from O to A prime, which is 30. O to A prime is 30. All right, so again, the scale factor is always the new compared to the original. The new on the top, the original, whoops, the original on the bottom. All right, so in this case, the new is O to A prime, which is 30. And the original one, the pre-image, is O to A, which is 60. All right, so when you simplify the 30 over 60, you're gonna, by dividing the top and the bottom by 30, you're going to get 1 over 2. All right, but the way you write it is like this, 1 to 2. You write the new one first and the original one second. That's what they wrote over here. The scale factor is 1 to 2. If I compare the other corresponding sides, you get the same answer, okay? Así que aquí le están dando la medida. Um, así que si escojo estos dos lados para compararlo, estos dos lados correspondientes, recuerden que el factor de escala es el nuevo sobre el original. El nuevo E que tiene el apostrofe. Así que... Así que arriba escribí el 30 porque ese O hasta A primo que es 30 y abajo escribí el original que sería O a A que esa distancia es 60. 30 sobre 60 cuando lo simplifico es 1 sobre 2 y se escribe 1 a 2. 1 a 2. El nuevo primero y el original segundo. En la tarea te, le van a dar las medidas necesarias. No tienen que medir nada. Simple, simplemente encontrar el factor de escala. All right, here we have another example uh, similar to what you're going to have on your homework where the measurements are going to be given to you. So let's just look at this real quick. It says o, a, o to A prime, right? Again, O is the center of dilation. That's the center of dilation. Okay, so O to A prime is 19, and O to A is 57. So our pre-image is O to A, the 57, and our image is O to A prime, which is 19. All right, so the scale factor, let me write it over here, scale factor, is going to be the new over the original. All right, in this case, the new is the O to A prime, which is 19. And the uh, original or the pre-image is O to A, which is 57. And if you divide the top and the bottom by 3, no, not by 3, by 19, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you divide the top and the bottom by 19, you're going to get 1 over 3, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 1 over 3. All right, so the way you would read that or you could read that as like this, one, two, three. One, two, three. Which is what they wrote right here. The scale factor is one to three. All right, let's look at the next example. All right, so I took this picture directly from your homework, but I changed the numbers. Because on, on this, uh, to be honest, on this lesson, I really had to, I didn't really like the way that the book was explaining it, and there weren't too many examples, so I kind of had to make my, some of my own examples. All right, so let's say we got to determine the scale factor. All right, so O to A prime is 6. O to A prime is 6. And O to A is 42. O to A is 42. All right, so what's the scale factor? All right, so again, the scale factor 
is the new over the original. The new is the one that has the apostrophe. All right, so O A prime. This one goes on the top. The new is the six, and the original is the forty-two. Because we're making our original line segment smaller. It's going from 42 to 6. All right, so the new on the top, the original on the bottom. El nuevo arriba que es O A A primo, que es 6. El original abajo, O A, que sería 42. All right, now we always got to simplify the fraction. So in this case, if you divide the top and the bottom by 6, you're going to get 1 over 7. All right, so the scale factor... The scale factor would be one over one to seven, all right? So the scale factor is going to be one to seven. If I write it as a fraction, I would write one over seven. All right, that means that if you multiply forty-two times one over seven, you're you're gonna get the uh, the the new side. All right, because 42 times 1 over 7 would give you 42 over 7, which equals 6. All right, so that's what you're multiplying the pre-image by to, to get the, uh, the image. Si multiplico el, uh, el original por el factor de escala, que es 1 sobre 7, por ejemplo, aquí el original es OA, que mide 42. Si lo multiplico por el factor de escala, que es 1 sobre 7, me daría 42 sobre 7, que cuando lo simplifico me da 6, que es la medida de la imagen después de la transformación, de O a A primo. Ok, so this is the same exact picture, I just, I just changed the uh, numbers here to give us another example. So again, to determine the scale factor, I put the new over the original. So the new one is the one with the apostrophe, O to A prime, which is 4. And the original is O A, which is 24. And once I simplify that fraction by dividing the top and the bottom by 4, I'm going to have 1 over 6. All right, so the scale factor, whoops, scale factor. Is going to be 1, 2, 6. All right. Same thing, but with a different picture, but same exact thing. All right, so the, determine the scale factor of the dilation. If OA equals 8 and O to A prime is 40. O to A prime is 40. All right, so our pre-image... Our pre-image is this one right here, this uh, this triangle right here, okay? And our our image is this one. But I don't mean to complicate matters. We just got to look at these numbers, all right? So the scale factor is always going to be the new compared to the original. The new goes on the top. So in this one, the new is O to A prime, which is 40. And the original is O to A, which is 8. 40 divided by 8 equals 5. All right, so the scale factor, actually, hold on, just to keep it in the, I'm sorry, if I divide the top and the bottom by 8, I'm going to have 5 over 1. 40 divided by 8 is 5, but the reason I'm writing it 5 over 1 is in case they want us to write it this way. I want to make sure you know how to write it. So if the scale factor is 5, I would write that 5 to 1. All right? So make sure you realize what I'm saying on that one. All right? Yes, the scale factor is 5. You're multiplying the pre-image, all the dimensions of the pre-image by 5 to get the image. But in case they want to want you to write it like this where you need two numbers, you would write 5 to 1. Just turn the whole number into a fraction by putting a 1 on the bottom. And you write the new one first and the original one second. Five to one. Así que en este, el factor de escala es cinco, pero por si necesitan escribirlo de esta forma, el cinco lo pueden poner como una fracción, cinco sobre uno. Y recuerden que el número que está arriba, que es la medida, 
que, que es, corresponde al lado nuevo, eso se escribe primero. Ese número se escribe primero y el número de, que corresponde al lado original se escribe segundo. Así que el factor de escala sería 5 a 1. All right, same picture, but I changed the numbers. So let me just do one more like this. So in case you guys need another example. So OA is 7 and O to A prime is 28. So the scale factor is going to compare the new to the original. So in this one, the new is 28. The original is 7. When I divide the top and the bottom by 7, I'm going to get 4 over 1, which obviously equals 4. All right, but so the scale factor is going to be 4 to 1. 4 to 1. All right, always write the new one here. The new one goes right here, and the original one goes right here. Okay, el factor de escala sería 4 a 1. All right, I'm going to skip this one because I don't want to, I'm trying to, I made the last couple of lessons so long. All right, I, I think I put too many examples there. Let's look at this one because this one's on your homework. All right, um, you work at a photography store. Yeah, I made, I made the last couple of lessons way too long and I'm trying to make this one uh, short to give you guys a break and the next couple of lessons, hopefully, if I can, short. All right, uh, you work at a photography store. A customer has a picture that is 4.5 inches tall. So here's my picture and my picture is 4. Point... Let me try that again. Here's my picture and my picture is 4.5 inches tall. The customer wants a reduced copy of the picture to fit a space uh, of 1.8 inches tall. So he wants to reduce it, he wants to make it smaller so that it's 1.8 inches tall. This is the uh, original. And this is the new. The correct terms are the pre-image and the image, but I think this is more uh, easier to comprehend if I just use original and new. All right, so the question is, what scale factor? What's the scale factor that you should use to reduce the picture to the correct size? All right, so again, all these problems are the same thing. The scale factor is the, uh, the scale factor is the new compared to the original. The new is 1.8 and the original is 4.5. If you divide the top and the bottom by 0 0.9, you're going to get a scale factor of 2 to 5. All right? And that's your answer. Or 2 to 5. You could also write it this way. 2 to 5. All right, now listen. If that confuses you about 0 0.9, you could just ignore those decimal points. And if you have 18 over 45... You should realize that they can both be divided by 9 to make them smaller and you get 2 over 5. Okay, now because that's 1.8 and 4.5, you got to divide them by 0 0.9 to get 2 over 5. But I'm just giving you the idea. I'm sure on the homework it's going to be a similar type of number. So you could kind of like, I'm pretty sure it's going to be something where you could do something similar. Ignore the decimal point and just think about these numbers. What do you divide them by to make them smaller? In this case, you could divide them by 9 to get 2 over 5. For these, it would be divide by 0 0.9 to make them smaller. Okay, um, así que en este problema que van a tener uno similar en, el, en la tarea, eh, dice que, un, que si tú trabajas en una tienda de fotografía y hay un cliente que tiene una foto, aquí está la foto, que quiere reducir. La foto original mide 4.5 pulgadas de alto y lo quieren reducir a 1.8 pulgadas. Ok, así que, um, ¿qué factor de escala se usa? Así que 4. Punto, oh, disculpen, 1.8 sobre 4.5, porque es el nuevo sobre el original. Se puede dividir arriba y abajo, y abajo por 0.9 para, para simplificar esa fracción que le da 2 sobre 5. Si no se dan cuenta de 0.9, pueden pensar de esta manera. Ignoren el punto decimal. Si uno tiene 18 sobre 45 y sabe la, el, los múltiples de 9, 
se da cuenta que se pueden dividir por 9 para coger 2 sobre 5. Aquí como es 1.8 y 4.5 se tienen que dividir por 0.9. Estoy casi seguro que en la tarea es algo similar donde es con un punto decimal pero imaginen de cómo se simplifica si no tendría un punto decimal y va a ser la misma cosa. Okay, and this is the last example, also very simple. It says an artist uses a computer program to enlarge a design as shown. What is the scale factor of dilation? So this is our pre-image. We're starting with a small one and we're gonna enlarge it. We're gonna make it bigger. All right, we gotta enlarge it. So uh, just pick any side. I guess if we look at this side, the measure of that side is gonna be three. And then if you compare it to this side, it's going from 6 to 15, which is 9 units long. Of course, you could also count the little lines, but I thought that would be easier. Okay, so if, if I'm comparing 3 to 9, that means that the scale factor is going to be 3. Okay, remember the scale factor is going to be the new compared to the original. In this case, the new is 9 and the original is 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, but if you need to use both numbers, I can't remember on the homework if they want you to, how, how they want you to write it, but if you, if you need to use both numbers in your answer, I would write the answer like this, 3 to 1. So the scale factor, let me write scale factor here. The scale factor for this one is 3 to 1. Ok, así que en esta pregunta que hay uno similar en la tarea, dice que están usando un programa de computadora para, para hacer más grande el, el, el diseño. Ok, así que ¿cuál es el factor de escala? Estamos empezando con este rectángulo, así que si comparo este lado a este lado, fue de 3 a 9. Y recuerden que el factor de escala se compara el nuevo a el original, El nuevo mide 9, este lado mide 9 y el lado original era 3. Así que si lo simplifico, esa fracción es 3 sobre 1 o 3 a 1. Así que el factor de escala es 3 a 1. All right, guys, that concludes this lesson. And uh, the assignment is in your student portal and it's due by 6 a.m. the next day. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. See you guys next class.